Hi, F13. Um, I thought I'd make a video for today, um, seeing as we're not going to be in due to the snow. Um, my plan was to uh, get most of the statics chapter done, uh, chapter 7 from Mechanics 2. Um, we're not quite going to get as far as connected particles, which is the last part, but I thought we'd do the part that's on friction and um, kinematics on an inclined plane. Uh, okay, so to remind ourselves of friction that we did at the start of the year, um, we've got this formula here, F is less than or equal to mu R. Uh, mu being the coefficient of friction, the uh, sort of measure of roughness of the slope um, or surface that your particle's on, and then R is your normal reaction force. Uh, so friction, if you remember, can't exceed this value um, if the um, object is either accelerating or if it's in what we call limiting equilibrium, as we'll see, um, then it's going to um, uh, be this value of mu R. This is our frictional force. Okay, and of course, remember, it also acts opposite to the direction to which it would be moving if the frictional force wasn't there. You've got to point it um, in a way that opposes the uh, intended motion of the object. Okay, so um, these are all from your printed booklet, which I'm hoping you maybe have at home or maybe it's um, kind of stuck at school. Uh, we'll have to, I don't know about that. Okay, to start with, um, this is, I think, on a horizontal plane. Oh, no, it's not. It's inclined at 20% above the horizontal. So 10 kilogram box on an inclined plane. Let, let's draw it out. Okay, nice, perfectly straight uh, uh, surface there. Right, 10 kilograms. Let, let's draw all the things that we tend to draw on these pictures. We should be used to these by now. 10 kilograms, 20 degrees. And then all of the weights and various other forces that might be on the picture here. So 10G, and I'm going to try and stick to the same colours for the same direction. So you've got 10G cos 20, because remember that 20 degrees ends up in here as well. And then I think I'll do purple for the parallel to the plane, so this will be 10G sine 20. Okay, let's see if there's any other forces. So uh, 10 kilogram force, and that's it. There's no other forces. So it seems as if gravity is trying to pull the box down the slope with this purple force here. Uh, and so in limiting equilibrium, that means we've got maxed friction um, acting in the opposite way. So this way here, we've got mu r acting in the opposite way. And that's what's meant by limiting equilibrium. Okay, it, it might also say on the point of moving either up or down the slope, depending on what's going on. Right, what else is missing? Uh, normal reaction force. Okay, that's going to be here. Okay, right, so now we're ready to resolve because all the forces are there. Um, starting with the blue direction, uh, perpendicular to the slope. Okay, so we can see that we're in, we're in equilibrium, so the two blue forces are equal. Okay, so we know our value of R, um, and I, I can then get the coefficient of friction by subbing that into the purple equation. So if I resolve this way, then mu R is 10G sine 20. Mu, therefore, is 10G sine 20 uh, divided by R, which we've seen is 10G cos 20. Okay, that's going to produce a lot of cancelling, 10G cancels, sine 20 over cos 20 then is tan of 20 degrees. Which if you then want the decimal for that, it ends up being roughly, oops, roughly 0.364 for your um, coefficient of friction. Okay, um, part B, a horizontal force of magnitude P is applied to the box, and then given that the box remains in equilibrium, find the maximum possible value of P. Okay, I'm going to first of all get rid of this part A, so I've got some more space. I then need to add the horizontal force to the picture, but what that's going to then do is that's going to affect the value of R, seeing as there's now a force acting in this perpendicular direction. Okay, or at least a component of that force will act in that direction, so that's going to change the value of R. So let's put that force on. So P is uh, horizontal. Um, I can then use alternate angles to work out that there's a 20 degrees in here. We'll turn it to this one. 
And then I need to put the corresponding components on. I've got a 20, no, um, P sine 20 here. That's opposite. And then I've got a P cos 20 other way. Okay, right, what's going to happen now is, seeing as you're now trying to push the box up the slope, um, it will turn out that the direction of friction is going to change, okay? So you're going to need to do that as well and change the direction. Okay, quite often that will happen from one part of the question to the next. And now we've effectively got to start again. Um, we're going to get two equations in uh, P and... Um, R. Mu is going to stay the same. Mu doesn't ever change during a question unless you change the surface that you're on. Uh, so mu is still what it was before, 0.364. Let's be able to make a note of that because that's still going to be that. And now we just do it again. So uh, starting with perhaps um, blue. So that would mean uh, P sine 20 plus 10G cos 20 equals um, R, and then in purple, P cos 20 um, equals the ones that go downwards, which is mu R plus 10G sine 20. Okay, right, so this is something that I want to solve for P, uh, which means I've then got to sub out for the value of R, which I've got isolated here, so this um, blue expression here is going to be subbed into this R there, which is going to make a horrible looking equation, but we'll kind of see what happens there. All right. So writing the second equation again, P cos 20 is uh, mu 0.364. R is the expression in blue. Uh, plus 10g sine 20 degrees. Okay, right, this is something that I need to then solve for p. p is here and here. So let's maybe think about which side to put things on. I reckon we should put things on the... Uh, our p terms on the left side, because I think we're going to leave a positive term over here. Okay, so if you expand out and tidy up, you're going to end up with p lots of uh, cos 20... Uh, minus this term over here, which is 0.364 sine 20. And that's going to equal everything left on this side, which is 0.364 times the 10g cos 20. And then plus this extra 10g sine 20. Okay, then dividing this bracket underneath tells you the, the uh, maximum possible value of P, which if you give me a second, I can type that in. Ten times nine point eight times sine twenty divided by in brackets cos twenty minus zero point three six four sine twenty. Right, gives you about 82.2. You can let me know if you get anything different to that because I might have made a typing error, but that's the method at least sorted. 82.2 newtons. Okay, right, so that's one um, equilibrium problem sorted. Okay, let's move on. All right, let's do one more of these. So uh, this time the weight is 10 newtons. Uh, we're angled at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Um, another uh, horizontal force of, of magnitude P acts in the parcel. Um, we're in equilibrium on the point of slipping up the plane. We need to look carefully for the um, wording there to see which way friction is going to point. If it's on the point of slipping up, that means friction points down. Right, the normal reaction is 18. The coefficient of friction is um, unknown. It's still mu. Find the value of P, find the value of mu, and then we, uh, eventually we're going to remove this horizontal force. Okay, so that's maybe, uh, I'm, I'm going to probably draw a bigger picture here because I want to make sure I put um, everything I want to on the picture. Okay, so that's, uh, let's 
all the autopilot stuff that we tend to do. Right, uh, 10 newtons, not 10 G, bear in mind, 10 newtons for the weight. Um, 10 cos 30 is going to be 5 root 3. Uh, 10 sine 30 for this purple is going to be 10 times a half, which is 5. Uh, we're told the normal reaction is 18. We have the horizontal force uh, P. And I think that's all we need that we can put on so far. Oh, apart from friction. Let's do friction after I've done these components. So we've got um, this component here. That's P uh, cos 30. That's P root 3 over 2. This component here, acting downwards at a jaunty angle, is P sine 30, which is P over 2. Right, and as we said, based on this slipping up the plane, um, or at least trying to slip up the plane, we've got a frictional force that acts down, and that's going to be mu times R, R being 18, so 18 mu. Okay. Right, so if we look at the colours that I've got, it looks like um, blue is probably the way to go first because that's only got P as the unknown. And then once I've got P, I can do an equation in purple and um, sub in my value of P to get the value of mu. So let's go uh, blue first. Right, P over 2, that's downwards, plus 5 root 3, also downwards, equals 18. Um, solving for P, I'm going to double and then subtract um, the, the what would be 10 uh, root 3 terms. So P is... 36 minus 10 root 3. That's sorted. And then in purple, we've got P root 3 over 2 um, equals uh, the two uh, ones that go down the slope, which is 18 mu um, plus 5. Right, I'm going to double that. P root 3 equals 36 mu plus um, 10. Right, let's now sub in um, our value of P. So P is 36, but I'm going to times that by root 3, minus 10 times root 3 times root 3 is 30, equals uh, 36 mu plus 10. Solving for mu gives us a number I'm about to tell for you in a second, 36 root 3. Um, minus 30, minus 10, divided by 36, gets you 0 0.621. That's the three sig fig. Okay, so P is done here. P, uh, we got here for part A. Mu is here. If you want to, you can work out the um, decimal value for that, for that but we're, we're about done. Okay, right now the horizontal force is removed. All right, that's going to be annoying because I need to now draw another picture where there's no horizontal force and just think about all the forces that are left over. Uh, remembering as well that mu um, does not change. Okay, drawing excellent horizontal uh, lines today. Um, okay, so here's our box. Um, the horizontal is removed. Uh, the weight it hasn't changed. Um, the normal reaction, however, has changed. Um, it will now be... Um, only this value here, which is 5 root 3. So let's add our new normal reaction force to this, 5 root 3. Um, now the box is um, attempting to slide down the plane. Um, well, we think, we suspect, okay, we don't know if it's going to move or not, but the um, this force is attempting to pull the box down. Friction, therefore, is going to um, act upwards. That's going to be mu r. So that's, I'll write mu because we know what the value is. I'll write it as mu, mu times 5 root 3. Okay. Um, if I can then compare these two purple values, um, I can work out if this um, force of 5 newtons is enough to overcome uh, the maximum amount of friction that's given here. So let's have a think. So 5 root 3 mu, let's type that in. Right, that's roughly 5.38. Right, 5.38 is greater than the value of 5, um, which means that um, there is enough friction to stop the movement down the plane. OK, 
Okay, and we're done because all I had to do was compare those values to see what was going to happen. Right, so that's that would be 14 marks if you can do all of that. Um, I think I'm going to stick to just exercise 7C today, which is all to do with just um, objects in um, equilibrium on the inclined plane. So if you check straight my homework, I'll tell you which ones of those to have a go at. And then I think next week we'll move on to the uh, SUVAT problems and then finally the pulley problems on an inclined plane as well. And then that's that chapter done. All right, thank you, Year 13. I hope that helped. Um, if not, um, please drop me an email um, and I can get back to you throughout the course of the day. But I hope you enjoy your snow day um, and that, um, yeah, you have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.